I mean, none of us today would like a T-Rex to walk in here and join us for lunch. Thank you, sir. Not today. Right, because the usual picture is we would join him for lunch and never leave the table, right? <laughs> Except in his stomach. Yes, exactly. But the funny thing is, you see the Bible comment about what T-Rex and the others ate in the beginning? Yep. Yep. They all ate plants. plants. So mm -hmm. the Bible is not a book of religion. It's a book about religion. It's a book about diet. It's mm -hmm. a book about weather. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's no seriously bad weather mentioned till after Noah's flood. Mm -hmm. So would you read us Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 before we talk about the size of the, the, the giant lizards and... So Genesis 8 verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Okay, now that's the first reference to summer mm -hmm. and the first reference to winter in the Bible. Actually, that's a weather forecast. Yes. Now, if Quite that an accurate was, one. Yeah, it was the last accurate, <laughs> accurate weather forecast one. we yeah. ever had, right? And um, what you'll find is if that's religion, then all the television stations will have to cancel their weather program. Because they'll be all religion. That would all be religion. So the Bible is a book about everything, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So is the theory of evolution. Right? And they're coming from exactly the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. But what most people have never asked is, if winter and summer came on the planet, if cold and heat and snow came on the planet, what would happen to the lifespan of people, of lizards, etc.? It would decrease. Okay, it would decrease. That's one reason you don't have very big reptiles here in Romania. No, right? no we don't. And they have none in, in Alaska. The weather is too severe. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got dinosaurs in the rocks, correct? Yes but they're all gone. Yeah. We don't seem to find any living ones. We have one cousin of theirs living in Australia. It's called the Crocodilosaurus, right? Well, crocodile for sure, yeah. right? But it's in the Archaeosaur family. Now, the interesting thing is you can go and get your tape measure out and being in the reptile family, guess what you discover about how it grows? Uh, much bigger than it's today. Ah, you see, in the present world, it starts out about that big. Mm -hmm. Then it grows every day of its life, as long as it lives. The older it lives, the bigger it gets. It never stops growing till the day it drops dead. And they drop dead around about 100. Mm -hmm. And they're maybe six or seven meters long. But in the rocks, you find them up to 18 meters long. Now that's a crocodile, oh, yeah. right? So what we've got is abundant evidence that the world hasn't evolved upwards, no. it's actually come evolved. downwards. Yeah. It's gone from good to bad yeah. to worse to Timisoara. Mm -hmm. right? That's what, it's, what <laughs> it's done. So therefore we've got the real history of the world is revealed in scripture and in the rocks. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that Jesus said the rocks would cry out his praises mm -hmm. and they don't applaud Charles Darwin at all. They don't no. applaud the Discovery Channel. No. They tell us there's something wrong with the planet. You asked me to read out of chapter 8. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the main character of chapter 8 is Mr. Noah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, coming to Mr. Noah. Yeah. Okay. You talked about dinosaurs, reptiles, sauruses, all kinds of other things. Uh, if sharks were bigger then, mm -hmm. if uh, dinosaur lizards were bigger then, if snakes were bigger at the time, uh, what about humans? And taking Noah as being a human representative, at least for these chapters of the Bible, um, how big he was? In this case, how big was his building, his ark? Okay, well, what we know about humans is that unlike the reptiles, unlike the turtles, unlike the sharks, we don't keep growing as long as we live. We grow pretty fast for the first 14 or 15 years of our life, mm -hmm. and then we stop growing that way. Mm -hmm. Then courtesy of fast food, we start to grow this way. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, there's a physical limit. Yes. And it turns out there's a very good design reason mm -hmm. for it. Creatures that grow horizontally can just spread their weight yes. along the ground. Yes. It doesn't matter how big yeah. they get, or sharks, it doesn't matter. The water's yes. holding them up. Them. But you and I, and giraffes and dogs, the weight goes down our leg bone. Mm -hmm. So the strength of our leg bone determines mm -hmm. how tall we can grow. So every creature whose weight goes down their leg has got a little clock in there mm -hmm. to switch them off. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if that clock breaks, one of two things will happen. You will keep growing mm -hmm. and you become a present day giant, giant. who is usually a freak, right? Yeah, yeah. And they usually die young yeah. as a result, yes. right? 
or if it breaks before you've finished growing, you become a pygmy, right? Either way, we know the way to treat these problems. Now you have to fix that little hormone yes. clock mm -hmm. in there. But in the days of Noah, Noah lived in a world that had no winter and no summer. He lived in a world that had the best possible ground still. It was still the world that God had created, even though it had been cursed by sin, right? So the food that Noah got would have been the best possible. So what have we discovered? If human beings are growing and they don't have access to good food, they will never reach their maximum. So if you look at the little children in Asia where they only have low protein food mm -hmm. and then you shift them to America or to Europe, mm -hmm. man, they get much taller yes, than their parents. Yes. Not because their parents couldn't have gotten tall, but they just didn't have the food. Mm -hmm. But they, they do have a built-in maximum. Mm -hmm. So therefore Noah would have been bigger than we are but nowhere near as big as what we call the gigantic yeah. freaks. Mm -hmm. But it's a very important question you've asked for one more thing which you mightn't have thought of. You see, Noah's Ark was measured in cubits. You remember the Ark? God was going to judge the world for, for its sin and Noah had to build an Ark? Let me guess. Yeah? My cubit isn't exactly what his cubit was. Yes. And you see, most of us have a fairy story version of Noah's Ark and we say, well, how could you fit all the animals on that boat? Mm. But look, there's my cubit, uh -huh. all right? But if I'm twice the size, mm -hmm. I have twice the twice cubit. The cubit. But if the cubit was twice the size, the ark was eight times bigger, bigger. than what we imagined. Mm. And particularly if you add, you didn't have to take huge dinosaurs on board. They were born the same size yeah. as baby crocodiles. So Noah had plenty of room, mm. and it was God's provision for him to escape God's judgment mm. because he alone trusted the God who created, who had the right to judge man for his sin. Mm. Precious friends, we arrived with Mr. Mackay's help and uh, following the word of God to a very crucial point. <clears throat> Noah escaped judgment. He was told by God how to escape judgment. If we to think a little bit that in the most exact time of our history, the Son of God came to tell us how to escape the final judgment. Uh, Mr. Mackay, can we say that the Lord Jesus is our Ark of Salvation? He made Himself our Ark of Salvation? Well, as you read through what Jesus said, you find He Himself said, just as it was in the days of Noah, oh so it will exactly. be when the Son of Man comes again. Mm. So he made that picture for ourselves to Beautiful. take up. Mm. So that he was saying, look, God provided a way to mm. be saved from the judgment. The people who got on the ark, they didn't have to pay for a ticket. No, right? It was no. free. Exactly. God had told them what to build, how to be saved, mm. and all they had to do was get on board. Mm. Sadly, they ignored it. Yes. And except for Noah and his family, they were judged. Mm. And in the same way, Jesus is our ark. And you don't have to pay for a ticket because everything that needs to be done, oh. he's done it. Beautiful. So it is the way of salvation from God's coming judgment. But the interesting thing is the first judgment was by water and Jesus warns us, particularly in the end of the gospel, the next judgment will be by fire and it will be for eternity. If for Noah and his family was so important to get on the ark as God said and when God said, wouldn't it be much more important for all of us humans to think to get on the ark which is the Lord Jesus. Repent and get on to the ark of our salvation, onto the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember one beautiful thing about Noah's ark? The Lord closed the door behind. Think a little bit. If you repent and commit your life to the Lord Jesus, he is going to seal you into Himself for eternity and you will live eternal life into the Lord Jesus Christ. If Noah was so happy living whatever he had to live still, um, getting out of the boat, we will never but never get out of the Lord Jesus. We will be with Him for all eternity and that is so good news. Mr. Mackay, it was a joy to hear it. We are really thrilled to think that you will join our next program to discover that the verdict of the Bible, the verdict of science is creation. Thank you so much and may God bless you.